So hi guys, my name is Shivam Rai. Currently, I am studying in Gautam Buddha University, Greater Noida, Uttar Pradesh, India. Uh, this is a presentation which I made for a webinar on intellectual property and intellectual property rights. Uh, what does the role uh, WT World Trade Organization, WIPO, TRIPS, trade-related aspects of intellectual property rights uh, play in our daily lives? What is the significance of uh, these 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 organization and agreements, right? So uh, this is something which I wanted to share with everyone. Uh, I am pretty new to this uh, world of uh, streaming and uploading these presentations on YouTube. My first YouTube channel. Uh, I am becoming fam familiar with these things, and um, I am also. Uh, using for the first time the OBS studio, right? So these screen recordings and all these technicalities I'm dealing with and I'm pretty new to this. So please bear with me if there is any problem, right? Uh, please see this video from start to end, right? And uh, I hope you will like it. And yeah, you, will, uh, you wouldn't regret this thing, right? I am pretty sure about it. Uh, so please do listen. And yeah, subtitles, uh, most probably I will add the subtitles also uh, so that you wouldn't bother about these things, right? And uh, I am making this presentation keeping in mind that uh, viewers outside India will also going to see this. So that's why I'm making this in totally in English. And yeah, so this is the thing. So please be with me, right? So I'm going to start the presentation, right? Okay, so now starting with the presentation. Yeah, so this was a club which I was a part of in, when I was studying in my university, right? Free Radical Club. So this was a webinar on leading international treaties concerning intellectual property rights. A world trade organization, WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization and trade related aspects of intellectual property rights. Okay, so starting with the international treaties. International treaties are agreements on countries to carry out activities of mutual interest based on certain agreed principles, norms, and practices. And these are binding on all the members' countries, right? Source of international law and a means for evolving and developing peaceful cooperation among nations of the world. But most important thing is this, that to start with the presentation on intellectual property rights necessary to know the basics right and i am assuming and most probably and usually uh, the viewers who are listening to these kind of videos or presentation would be new right i am assuming this so i would start with the basics right so what is intellectual property intellectual property is made from two words intellect plus property creativity gives birth to intellectual and creativity is the ability to combine all the existing pieces in our head knowledge memory inspiration into incredible new things new ideas intellectual property is an intangible property when we own our ideas which actually represents a static claim on a dynamic process of production right a static claim a dynamic process of production IP is that property which, uh, even when taken away, still remains in the possession of its original owner. It can be possessed both by the frightful owner and by a thief, as you can see in this card, right? Now, it is really important to know that intellectual property rights are extremely crucial for businesses, drive innovation resulting in the delivery of better services and products, consumers, Right? The first way a startup or an individual can succeed against larger rivals is by patenting its invention and ideas. Patents level, playing field between startups and incumbents by ensuring those who innovate are adequately rewarded. Right? When a startup patents its ideas, its valuation increases and is likely to attract more investors. And uh, this is a trend that investors acquire a startup whose IP is product, right? Usually. So intellectual property rights are extremely important in that. Okay. 
uh, common types of intellectual property includes patent, copyright, trademark, industrial design, and trade secret. A patent provides legal protection for an invention which is novel, non-obvious, an application of a discovery or concept, or a new idea that is useful. Example, patent of a steam engine by James Watt. Copyright provides legal protection from plagiarism of any creative work as well as scientific and business publication, computer software, and compilations of information. Example, Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling has copyrights over books and movies. A trademark provides right to use logos, particular words, symbols, or different markings that indicate the source or origin of a product or service. Example, Pepsi and McDonald's. A further method for benefiting from an invention is simply to keep it a secret rather than to disclose it, which is a trade secret. And the famous example of this is Coca-Cola, right? So it is really important that when we talk about intellectual property, uh, intellectual property is what gives companies and innovators the incentive they need to innovate. Without strong and enforceable intellectual property, our world would look very, very different than it does today. As you can see this image. Now, one more important thing and the most important thing is this. That uh, it is said, right? You, has, you have heard this. thing that God is omnipotent, omniscient and omnipresent. And according to me, intellectual property as a subject has in common one quality, right? That is of omnipresent. It is present everywhere. The laptop, PC, or smartphone, which all of you are using right now to access this presentation. The internet, the application Google Meet, Zoom, which you access, uh, which you use to access the classes. Furniture on which you are sitting right now. All are different IPs and are protected by different kind of intellectual property right. It is possible that uh, those of you who have interest in the field of business and commerce may disagree with me on the thought that intellectual property actually has two qualities in common, not one. That is, they are both omnipresent and omnipotent because patents and trademarks are the most valuable assets of any company. And the importance in increasing exponentially in the capitalistic environment in which we are living. Because the big corporate giants are actually acting like gods. Right? Big foes, Amazon, Facebook, Google, and, and uh, Apple. Right? So, big four techs are actually acting like gods. News all over. Media is telling stat on you. And now, coming to our intriguing headlines, right? So, I would start uh, uh, with a headline that Trump launched a trade war in China, right? Don't look to Biden to reverse it. Then there was this headline, Pfizer vaccine delivery could start before Christmas if all goes well. Well, this is a very, uh, this is news which was in last year, right? This was the presentation which I actually uh, made last year uh, in November, I think, November 15, right? Been dad only. And uh, the last one, KVC 12, IPS Mohita Sharma to become the second crorepati of the peace and will. Those of you who are of India, right? Uh, I just want to tell you that in British, uh, right, in Britain, there was the show called Who Wants to Be a Millennia? In America also. So, this is the Indian version. Kaun Banega Karodpati. Uh, and this was the 12th season in which a lady, an IPS officer, civil servant, uh, become the second Karodpati of the season. Uh, right? So, this was a really, really big news. And well, starting with the last headline, the thing was this that the coach in which one Mahita Shama won crore was an intellectual property in chemistry, actually. And I'm a student of chemistry, so that was really fascinating for me. 
The ocean was which explosive first used in World War II was first patented in 1898 by German chemist George Frederick Henning. The answer was, well, you all know, right? RDX, Royal Demolition Explosive. And this was the question which one had, one crore rupees. Fascinating, no? Going on the second headline about the US pharmaceutical company Pfizer, which is at least from one week uh, at that time, is well known as COVID-19 itself for which it has made its vaccine. And uh, it had 95% success rate in trials. Uh, right, so uh, this was also a company which was recently in news because of Bill Gates. And right, I wouldn't go further, right? Very controversial figure in news right now. But many of you wouldn't be aware of the foundations on which this company is built. Right. I am assuming that you can be aware that uh, there is this fascinating tale about the power of IP and intellectual property rights, which is associated with the company Pfizer, right? The medicine or the pill for which Pfizer was famous all over the world is first medicine till date used for its side effects and now has become synonymous with the medical condition it is prescribed for. Also, the introduction of the information leaflet which you got with any pack of medicine is the result of this small blue pill called the Viagra pill. Mm, I know, I know, everyone knows about it, right? Actually, a registered design along with the trademark, right? Fascinating story. I have given the link in the description box. You can see uh, the link to this story, right? Uh, it's really, really fascinating. Now, coming to the third headline, uh, first headline actually, uh, if we can go in a chronological level. So, uh, first headline of which you will do the background check. If you will do the background check, it will answer the questions which generally arises in the mind of a newcomer in the field of intellectual property. Like, does intellectual property has a great economic value? Or what if the economic value of intellectual property is overrated? Or can we consider the intellectual property rights or the protection which it gives as an exploitative tool for the corporate giants to intimidate and control an inventor? And most important question of all, what is the motivation for IP development? Right? What is the motivation for development and add as the quotient? In my view, the US China trade war is an excellent recent example which describes the answer to all the questions. To give you an idea of this issue in terms of trade-related aspects of IP, I will give a brief description. So basically, US-China trade war is an ongoing economic conflict, which all, all of you are aware, uh, which began in 2018 when President Donald Trump began setting tariffs and other trade barriers on China for unfair trade practices, among which were the growing trade deficit, intentional theft of intellectual property, and forced transfer of American technology to China. Right. Now, China has institutionalized a system that combines legal and illegal means of technology acquisition from abroad. It steals these intellectual property from industries, academia, and the government. It is the first sent to one of China's two dozen advanced science universities. They, in turn, apply for Chinese patents on the technology. When they are acquired, the government distributes the patents to various companies. Right. Uh, one of the best examples of this theft is telecommunication giant Hawaii Industries, which is going to roll out its 5G technology. It has acquired 56,000 5G and artificial intelligence related Chinese patents. And I want to repeat that 56,000 5G and artificial intelligence related Chinese patents, despite spending a dollar on research and development. The theft of intellectual property has led to a decline in economy in both the countries. As in the United States, consumers have to pay higher prices for goods and farmers are facing financial difficulties. In China, industrial output growth has been slowed down, which had already been on a decline. Also, many American companies have shifted supply chains to elsewhere in Asia. Not only these two countries are affected, but other countries' economy also declined by it. Well, so, but some benefited from increased manufacturing to fill the gaps, right? So this also led to the stock market instability. Now, 
all these disputes has led the World Trade Organization that is WTO handles disputes like these. A specialized United Nations body for the protection of intellectual property that is the World Intellectual Property Organization that is WIPO and to the agreement of trips at trade related aspects of intellectual property rights whose birth actually established the World Trade Organization. Now, some of the technical and theoretical part, World Intellectual Property Organization related to WIPO, right? So the World Intellectual Property Organization is a specialized agency of the United Nations. It is dedicated to developing a balanced and accessible international intellectual property system which rewards creativity, stimulates innovation and contributes to economic development while safeguarding the public interest. WIPO was established in 1970 by the WIPO Convention signed on 14 July 1967. Its headquarters are in Geneva, Switzerland. Now an important question should arise in your mind right i guess it should arise in your mind till now that why the world needed an ip organization what is the need of an ip organization right what is the need and the answer is fear yes fear when foreign exhibitor refused to attend the international exhibition of inventions in vienna in 1873 the need for a system to protect ip internationally become evident because they were afraid that their ideas would be stolen and exploited commercially in other countries. And by the way, I know that this is a painting by Raphael, the school of Athens. So don't please make faces and don't think that I am not an intellectual or something. I know just to give you a visualization of that era, right? Which happened. And uh, now, so let's towards the what were the admission criteria what is the admission criteria right so the wipo convention provides that membership is open to any state that is a member of the paris union for the protection of industrial property or of the Bern union for the protection of literary and artistic works or is a member of the united nations or of any of the united nations specialized agencies or of the International Atomic Energy Agency or that is a party to the statute of the International Court of Justice. Third, it is invited by the WIPO General Assembly to become a member state of the organization. And last one, to become a member, state must deposit an instrument of ratification or accession with the Director General of WIPO. The three organs of WIPO Coming to the three organs of WIPO, WIPO General Assembly Conference, WIPO Coordination Committee, right? So the WIPO General Assembly, its main functions are review and approval of the reports prepared by the Director General of WIPO. Meeting is held once in a year. WIPO Conference, main functions are adopting amendments to the WIPO Convention, examining and deciding all matter related to legal technical assistance and establishing biennial program of such assistance. WIPO Coordination Committee, its main functions are to advise the General Assembly, the Conference and the Director General on all administrative and financial matters of interest to these bodies, to prepare draft agenda for the Assembly and nominate a candidate for the post of Director General. Now coming to the activities of WIPO, see, WIPO is a global organization and Obviously, it has to take care of the needs and aspirations of a large number of people. Therefore, it is engaged in many activities of different kinds. First and main activity is to administer various treaties. And the next one is the normative activities like setting norms and standards for the protection of IP and enforcement of IPR. The time is changing rapidly and so is our environment. And therefore, WIPO has been engaged in evolving search norms for the protection of traditional cultural expressions and genetic resource for over a decade. Third one is to provide legal and technical assistance to its member states in the field of intellectual. 
setting up classification systems of patents, trademarks, and industrial design by dividing, for example, all inventions in different classes to enable quick and easy searching of patent inventions, providing registration services for international applications, and WIPO also commissions and publishes studies on emerging issues. WIPO administered treaties, and this I have taken from the website only, a screenshot from the website. Uh, there are total 26 agreements, and WIPO administers 24 of them. One is governed by UNESCO, and the other is governed by WTO, World Trade Organization, which is the TRIPS Agreement. Okay. So these are the three agreements, right? General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, General Agreement on Trade and Services, the trade related aspects of intellectual property rights. Right. Okay. Now coming to the main questions. What is WT? What is the goal? What they who they are, what they do, and what they stand for. So what is the WT? It is the only global international organization dealing with the rules of trade between nations. The core of WTO, its agreements, negotiated and signed by the bulk of the world's trading nations and ratified in their parliaments. What is the goal? The goal is to help producers of goods and services, exporters and importers conduct their business. Right? Simple. Now, who they are? Well, there are a number of ways of looking at the WTO. You can see it as an organization for trade opening or a forum for governments to negotiate trade agreements and a place for them to settle trade disputes. It is the same place where US and China are solving their issues, right? As I told earlier in the earlier slides, right? And what they do, the W2 is run by its member governments. All major decisions are made by the membership as a whole, either by ministers or by their ambassadors or delegates. What they stand for? The WTO agreements are lengthy and complex because they are legal text covering a wide range of activities. But a number of simple fundamental principles run throughout all of these documents. These principles are the foundation of the multilateral trading system. Right. Okay. Well, this is a pun intended Indian meme. Okay. A chronology samajhi basically means that now you please understand the chronology which I am going to show you on the next slide. Okay, so this is the timeline, timeline, right? So now we will focus on the timeline only and I wouldn't go down into the rabbit hole which will focus only on the specific event. So WT began life on 1 January 1995 succeeding the general agreement of tariff and trade which had regulated world trade since 1948. So starting with April 1994, Marrakesh Agreement establishing the WTO is signed. January 1995, as earlier told, the WTO is born. December 1996, first conference takes place in Singapore. December 1997, 70 WTO members reach a multilateral agreement to open their financial service sector. January and March 2000, negotiations begin on services and agriculture. November 2001, China becomes the WTO's 143rd member. Please note this thing that now in November. November 2001, China becomes the WTO's 143rd member, right? Uh, in January 2010, CHAIRS program launched to support developing country universities, and this is really important as a student, right? Uh, WTO CHAIR program aims to enhance knowledge and understanding of the trading system among academics and policy makers in developing countries for curriculum development. Research and outreach activities by universities and research institutions. And well, in my universities, I'm also studying. Uh, I'm also studying intellectual property and I'm also studying in my bachelor's also. And there was this, uh, in one semester, I had studied this intellectual property rights, right? So that was the time when I got interested in intellectual property and what is its significance on our life, right? So yeah, this was the thing. And uh, trade, uh, basically the trade related aspects of IP is extremely important for a wholesome development as far as a, a citizen of a developing country uh, concerned is concerned, right? Uh, by the way, uh, many of our universities or your universities, it is not important that the subject is not direct result of GS program, but the objective is similar, the objective is similar, right? Uh, and Last January 2017, amendment to the TRIPS agreement enters into force, easing access to medicine. 
right? January 2017. Electoral property, as you will see that it's, uh, it's a quite uh, infant, uh, if I had to say, in terms of, uh, 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 right? So it's, it's, it's in, it is in its infancy, intellectual property and intellectual property rights as far as the development is. Yeah, this is the thing. Uh, well, the upcoming slides are about the trade related aspects of intellectual property rights, grips, why it's important, especially in time like these in which the whole world is in a dire need for vaccine. And well, vaccine has come, vaccine has arrived, but yeah, uh, you will have a clear picture of what these things are. So the TRIPS agreement came into existence in 1995 as part of the agreement establishing the WTO. This agreement is a part of the single undertaking of the WTO by which all members of the WTO automatically become members of the uh, Significance. TRIPS is the first international treaty that sets up, that sets up minimum standards of protection for all forms of IPR. The genius of TRIPS is that it included certain other international instruments such as the Paris Convention, the Bern Convention, the Rome Convention and the Washington Treaty, which were already in existence to avoid re-establishing individual standards in all forms of IPR. It is the first international treaty on IPR that stipulates detailed civil, criminal and order enforcement provisions. Also, the first treaty having a distinct and binding dispute settlement system, not found in most international agreement right this is one of the most important things our uh, trips covers the following forms of ipr patents copyright trademark industrial design geographical indications protection of layout design for integrated circuit protection of indiscos information and protection of new plant varieties right so yeah these are one of those things uh principles uh focusing on the principal trips is guided by the following principles uh, adopt measures necessary to protect public health and nutrition and promote interest in sectors of vital importance to their socio-economic and technological development, provided that such measures are consistent with the provision of trips. Adopt. And the second point is adopt measures to prevent the abuse of IPR by right holders or restrain practices. Reasonably restrain trade or adversely affect the international trade of technology. Uh, it is possible that uh, these principles may not appear important to you in the short term, day to day life, but are very, very important for maintaining and shaping the agreement in times to come as they concern the welfare of the human race. Uh, now, and the point which I am going to make is will be a bit controversial. You may not like it, you may like it, but you have to accept it that this is it. And the point is this, that the motivation of intellectual property development actually arises from selfishness. Yes, selfishness. And popular uses, usage, this word is a synonym of evil. In fact, the exact meaning and dictionary definition of the word selfishness is concerned with one's own interests. Don't you think that it is the concern with one's own interests that we are enjoying the life today? which in turn is a result of capitalism. So, in his book, The Wealth of Nations, Adam Smith wrote that behind the meteoric rise of both science and empire lurks one particularly important force and that is capital. Were it not for businessmen seeking to make money, Columbus would not have reached America, James Cook would not have reached Australia, and Armstrong, then great Neil Armstrong would never have taken that small step to the surface of the moon. Right? Intellectual property has been essential both for building empires and for promoting science. Smith gave an argument that increase in the profits of private entrepreneurs, right? Private entrepreneurs is the basis for the increase in collective wealth and prosperity. This may not strike us as very original because we all live in a capitalist world that takes his argument in 7076 for granted. Smith's claim that the selfish human urge to increase private profits basis for collective wealth and is one of the most important revolutionary ideas in human history. Revolutionary not just from an economic perspective but even more so from a moral and political perspective. 
what smith says is in fact that greed is good and that by becoming richer i benefit everybody not just myself right and i think that ip is what gives companies and innovators the incentive they need to innovate and hence the motivation right hence the motivation at last <laughs> i would uh in this presentation by painting by william blake also a famous poet and my favorite poet and painter uh this is painting of isaac newton holding a compass you would see properly he had made him look like a giant and there is a reason for that in a letter to the then chairman of the royal society robert hooke newton was by, by the way robert hooke was his arch nemesis right <laughs> not arch nemesis is this is rival right and uh, there are so many famous well come to the point newton was showing his gratitude towards inventors and creators right uh, uh, when he wrote the letter to the chairman robert hooke newton was showing his gratitude towards inventors and creators who existed before him and he wrote this beautiful line that if i am able to see further than others as because i am standing on the shoulder of the giant and if i have to draw the analogy right then ip is the giant intellectual property are the shoulders and we are the ones standing on it we are the ones standing on it. thank you so much for appearing with me for listening this presentation it means a lot to me and to share this presentation if you like it and yeah it would be really really good me as a creator and it would be and if you like it please like please press the like right thank you so much